Well, 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 well. You're listening to Gloves Off with Professor Butron. All right then, I miss say words on point, straight forward. No dream about job, but everybody forward. Issues, facts and solutions. Get it at gloves off with Professor Mutron. All right, what are the thing is a revolution. Get it on point with Professor Mutron. Gloves off, no nonsense issues, politics, community. A better men for a reader. Gloves off, a revolutionary show. With everything that you need to know. With Professor Mutron. Watch ya! Following political paid advertisements do not reflect the political opinions of the program or its associates. Any political campaign or candidate who wishes to purchase advertising can do so. Advertising is open to all on behalf of Gloves Off. Back at you and gloves off, and today I have my pleasure with board member of LISD, Ricardo Garza. How are we doing today? We're doing great. Great day. Great day to be alive. Absolutely. Yeah. How's the new year coming along, especially with COVID and everything else? And what do you see? What do you see? Well, we, we've done uh, good. You know, nobody likes the situation that we're at right now, especially the kids. You know, they've been denied so much. Absolutely. And us as adults, we have to make the decisions that are going to make it a little bit easier of a transition for them. Now, we can, we're, the kids are willing to do whatever they want, but the main thing that I've learned all my life is that they like structure and, and uh, they like to belong. And I don't think that they've done anything uh, except do what they've been told. I'm super proud of what they've done. So, but us as adults, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm extremely proud of our, our staff at LISD. They've have gone above and beyond, worked extremely hard, to set up those kids for success. Even in these moments where where everything that's going on is telling them that you're not gonna get anywhere, they've done everything that we've asked of them, and staff has done everything that we've asked of them, and, and the transitional part of it has been the best that you can expect it for what we have. Absolutely, you know, it's some, it's some rough times. You yeah. know, um, a lot of uh, kids that graduated junior high going to high school and it's, a, it's an important time and high school graduates is an important time as, of course our, co our, our college graduates and as we were talking have you had mentioned before we robbed them of that experience yes yeah. okay we we should not rob these these kids this year right. I mean and I understand and Laredo is complying I see everybody in Laredo working towards a betterment for the community as a whole and I think everybody understands the fear and the dangers of of, uh, of the crisis. Yeah. And everybody's taking care of them themselves. Yeah. You know, you go to the store, people are maintaining distance properly, or they're trying to. They're wearing their masks, 
And folks, we're in a safe distance. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we're, we're far, 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 far. One, one, one in six feet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when, when we talk about that is we see we see people ad adjusting for the yeah. better. Yeah. What do you see, how do you see the school year? Do you see a change? I know oh, right now it's we have um, so we're going to get together our, re, our monthly board meetings that we we have and uh, throughout the last eight months we've been setting up and guiding ourselves just in case what hap was happening right now we're going to obviously the state and the feds have, have it is constantly changing as we move along it's like a, a moving target and they tell you to do one thing and then another. but we are we've set up a game plan where we said okay athletic wise this is what we're going to do academics is what we're going to do extracurricular this is what we're going to do and we laid out a game plan from day one so and we've been tweaking it as we go along as we learn more and as we do this uh, obviously safety is always going to be the issue and by the way let me just add that yeah i am an, i'm i'm a citizen of laredo and i'm a lifelong but I'm extremely proud of our of our citizenry. Yes, we, I, I think we're unlike any other city. Nobody wants to get this thing, you know. So we follow the rules here in Laredo. We're doing it the best way we can, and uh, I think that's what we transfer down to the kids, and we have to make them Absolutely. understand that we Absolutely. haven't had one gripe of anybody saying you're denying me this or we're denying that. They are, and you'd be surprised if they're totally understanding. Obviously, they're upset, but we have to show the compassion and the empathy to them that says you're going to be denied something, but this doesn't define you. So, like I said, academically and UI, uh, through UIL and, and the guidelines that we, we, we they bring down to us uh, from, from TA and UIL and the state, we've been adjusting to those and making it better for those kids. Um, as an example, we have to cancel, we're going to cancel football, right? Where you just get, just it can't happen. We're not prepared for it. It just becomes an issue. What else are we working on right now to make those seniors that are going to be going through their senior year without anything like this? This is a game plan that we have in or in place right now, so that they can have at least some memory of, of and a pleasant memory of their senior year of how you know we, we treated them through throughout this pandemic. You know, so we're just not sitting on our hands and, and saying we can't do anything. We're trying to go above and beyond, and I'm super proud, like I said, of staff. And uh, the AD's office and and our uh, curriculum and instruction people and especially our superintendent, we've been doing a great job, and you know and, and our board is working very well together to pass that vision on to them that just because we've been denied this thing, then we then we can't do something else. You know, and it's something here that people need to understand. I know within any school, any yeah. schooling, there's going to be mirth and where it's going to be banter, and we're going to have good times and bad times, of course, and. And we're gonna have some sports, right? But our main goal is education, right? Right. Everything else is kind of side on the sideline, right? And uh, so right now, let's take it to that time of of think about it, resonate of everything that's going on, and do better and and great. Let's start absorbing what we're learning. The, the idea and do it correctly. Yeah. The idea behind it is that I, I've, I've been a proponent of uh, there's a direct correlation between athletics and extracurricular sure. activities and student achievement. Um, and, and what's been proven time and time again. So if, if they feel like they belong and, and to this school, they're gonna give it 110% across the board. And by having that, we resonate, we, we push that mentality all the way through. Uh, from day one, 2012 to right now that I'm there. And it, you can see it kick in. The, the level of the, the integrity, the character, uh, the honor system, the, all that kind of stuff that makes you belong to school. All of a sudden, our discipline problems started going down. Our extracurricular activities went up. Our grades started going up. Attendance started going up. The LISD is soaring right now. And even through this process right now, we have plans that, that you wouldn't believe to take us even to the next level. We're set up over for the next four or five years already. We're already thinking about those things. But the most important part of it is that the kids are happy and they're safe. And so the, 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 the great system, the, the correct extra, uh, the, uh, curriculum and instruction system, bar none, we've been seeing kids out there that have reacted to it because they belong and, and, and the support system is there from their schools. We haven't let them down. We have everything that they need, we're set, they're set up for success. You know, and, and our investment for our resources that we have have paid off and are paying off. So we have plans for all those things in place. Absolutely. Now, um, what, what is one of the main changes that you think that has affected everybody during this whole process? 
especially in the school? I think mindset is, is, is a big thing because remember the adults are getting affected too. So we have to, we have to get that mentality out that it's, it's uh, the woe is me, you know, type of thing. The teachers, yeah, are suffering too. You know, the level of, of anxiety and, and possibly depression, I said, you, we can't show it because we're the, I tell everybody like this, we're the adults in the room. We have to act like it. We have to, you know, suck it up one way or another because we're, the kids are looking at us and we have to work for them. So the biggest thing for the kids is, is the anxiety and the depression and the, and the uh, loneliness that they're feeling because they're not having that. That's so right. we have to get the mindset first in order. And uh, we just started this past week the, the virtual program and I'm happy to report, man, 20, we've had student attendance over this last week was close to perfect. 24,000 kids a day are going to school, 23 something are going to school, you know, and that's our student population. So the parents, the money we invested on those Chromebooks, yeah. so that they can, and, and then all the Wi-Fi systems that we, we, we partnered up with the city, so that they can live anywhere that they want, there's no reason why they can't. We even have a system set up because we have our, our people that are coming in from across the river, so that they can be educated, so that they don't miss out. So, just that, uh, there's a, there used to be a program before uh, that uh, no child left behind, well, the, the mentality is here, we don't leave anybody behind. We have, to, we have to think way outside the box to do this, and, but we have to take care of the kids first, keep them in, in form, keep them in tune, keep them active, and, and keep them uh, invigorated by the, the, the whole schooling process. So it's, it's a tough task. It's an extreme, and then so now you have to ask the parents, well, we can't bring them to school, you have to stay at home with them. And that's another level. So that's what I'm saying, the adults are going through their thing too. So we are focused on, on what we can do with the kids. We're telling everybody that we have to be extremely patient and tough at being patient to do that. You know, um, you know, Mr. Garza, during, during, I understand about the depression and so on and so forth. When this crisis started, the first 14 days, people were, were getting upset. Yeah. And we, I had a lot of uh, small business owners, I had a lot of folks call. Hey, you know, this is going on. What's going to happen with our business? What's going to happen? And it happens, you know. Mm -hmm. And we'll sit down. We had a couple of meetings and so on and so forth. And people are calling all at all, all hours. And, and I guess that's the trust that, that we've built over 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 the last yeah. couple of decades. And um, some of them were the depression started hitting. Mm -hmm. Had a couple that uh, went were going down the rabbit hole towards suicide. And mm -hmm. you know, we tried pulling them out, and we did. Right. We had right. a good success. And I talked to Pilar of Laredo yeah. for counseling, and we can send individuals over there. And number one, Pilar of Laredo did an excellent job. This, as we know, we understand that depression is out there. Is there any way that parents that are going through this, that are breaking down, is there any way they can call the school for help for counseling? Yes, we have our parental guidance uh, program is there for them uh, whenever they need, and we'll guide them through. We work directly with Pilar with SCAN, all the Laredo agencies that are, sure. that are directly involved with that, we're hand in hand with them. We know uh, our counseling department and our counseling directors are bar none, they've been at the forefront of this. They know, you know, it, it'd be crazy for us to not even think that this kind of stuff was gonna happen. Me as a 30 year small business owner, man, it's, it was, it's difficult. It's still, we're still not out of the woods yet. People might think there's some certain sections that might be thriving, some of us are not doing well. No. But that's not the fault of the children. And that's not the fault of those. I mean, it used to be a taboo that uh, adults couldn't get depressed or have anxiety. Sure. It's, it, is, it is so incredibly responsible to think that people don't go through ups and downs their life. Life is hard enough as it is. Sure. So having uh, Pilar and having Scan and having uh, the, the doctors around town uh, 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 that, that are, that are uh, volunteering their time for us, you know, is, is an incredible feat. I think, if anything, this pandemic has shown the, the resilience of the city and how we can come together. Because that's, and that's what I tell the kids. We have to come together and work team-wise because we have to pick each other up. There's no way that I think anybody can go through this on their own. I'd say physically maybe on your own, but knowing that you always have a helping hand out there is, is, uh, is, Pretty cool. And you said an excellent point. We as Laredo have yeah. to come together. Yeah, 
we have been left, you know, and some small businesses have been left behind. Yeah. In fact, all the, all the small businesses Absolutely. were left behind. Absolutely. And the small business community are helping each other stand up yeah. to move forward. Yeah. And that's what's going on. And that is what a city is. Mm -hmm. And that's what a community is. Yeah. And that's the beauty of Laredo. That's what's going on. Yeah. Uh, aside from the elected officials in the city, mm -hmm. the city itself was the one that's picking itself up. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. And I think... Our school system, our school, both school systems, all, all, all the school systems, also the parochial ones, I think they're doing an excellent job with it. I think kids, number one, if you guys listen to this, continue learning. Right now is the time to learn. Just learn. Yeah. The time to play will come. The time to, you know, challenge the other school and the football team will come one day. Yeah. And so on and so forth. And we'll cheer those individuals on. But I understand as an athlete and folks that are involved training wise they need to get back in there because sometimes that's going to trigger them off into another road mm -hmm. so we have to keep them alive as well how, how can we do it can they go and work out or they not? have i have a dog i have two daughters right now a freshman <coughs> and a sophomore and let me tell you they have virtual wor workouts and they are they're hating it but let me explain they're hating it in a good way they are getting uh, the coaches are getting everything that they can out of them right now. And as I, I met with the coaches over the summer, and I told them, right now you're going to have to take that coaching hat off because you're not going to see it physically, and you have to become a mentor. And you're going to have to, you know, pretty much guide them through this whole deal athletically. And and so there's there's several things that we, we talk about, you know. Um, Sometimes life is not fair, and this is what's going on right now. So this is a reality of life. So we're really setting up the kids for the rest of their lives and just thinking that way. Sometimes you're going to the answer is no, and you're going to have to adjust and adapt, you know. And so the coaches are, are getting them there, knowing that their season might be canceled. Football team is still practicing every day. Knowing that the basketball season is kind of it's going to be and volleyball, and they're still practicing as if none, because the hope and the faith that, that we as adults give them that it might come, it's probably going to come at a, maybe at a later date. But let's be prepared. Let's just not sit on our hands and not do anything. I'm super proud of it. I mean, the best one time the AD's office and the coaches and everything because they are pretty much the disciplined wing of the of every school. You know, they, they keep every, the, the order intact in there. So the coaches are doing an extremely, extremely well job at, at getting those kids focused and doing their job. So I'm very proud of them. Absolutely. You're coming up for a re-election, correct? Yes, I am. If so, somebody wants to reach out to you and help you out in the campaign, how can they do that? They can call me directly or they can visit me on Facebook or on Instagram. Uh, I'm there for the first uh, um, I'm there for the first time ever in my life. Um, in full disclosure, I'm not I'm not very prepared and not very sa you know savvy at that yet. But I'll get there. Or they can call me at, at my phone number two eight five five nine eight four, and uh, I'm willing to talk. Man, I have friends of mine that are just telling me to be quiet because I, I'm so proud of LSD. Man, you wouldn't believe serving for the last eight years have been has been one of the greatest honors of my life. There was a, one of our, our presidents from the past. Um, once said, and, and it stuck to me, it says, uh, when you serve your community, you serve your country. Uh, we're a military family, obviously, and, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to serve my country the best I can. And eight Thank years you. of donating, and this is because nobody understands that LISD board, this is a non-paid position. Mm -hmm. But I remember as the great Salo Otero told me on the first day that I was sworn in, he goes, you are now part of a special group of people. And then I asked him why, he goes, you are now serving in the greatest public uh, arena that you can, a volunteer basis area, and you're doing it for the kids at no, with no pay. Absolutely. And it's been, it, it, they could, they could, they couldn't pay me enough to get, you know, it's, it's, it's I will turn it down. This has been one of the greatest honors of my life, I've, and I've met so many great kids that are now doing fantastic. I've met so many the 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 personnel and the staff and the administrators and superintendent at, at LSD. I mean, we have some very talented people. And the teachers are, I mean, can I say the, they are very talented. And so people don't understand that. And that's what we need to tell the public out there. People used to think, well, and I think there's a little gripe in there in society that say, well, they have the summer softness. Well, no, they work 365, I can guarantee you. you, you these people are professional. They, they get up every day and they do a job and they do it well. 
So we've been taking care of them very well in that LISD. So I'm super proud of that. Absolutely. Well, number one, I want to thank you for standing up and doing that because it's number and that's it's needed. Yeah. And it takes very few to stand up and write their name on a dotted line. Absolutely. And um, we wish you the best. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully you can come back and tell us anything new that's coming. Anytime, like I said, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm willing to talk LISD every day to whoever will listen. Yeah, we'll get it done. We'll come back in here in October and find out and see what else. Yeah, let's do. It. Let's do. All right. All right. Yeah. Until Thank you. folks. Until next time. Appreciate it. Thank you. You be safe and uh, remember. Elections is coming around. It's around the corner. Yeah, it is. It's 64 days. Exactly right. So until next time, peace. Thank you so much. Yep. Political paid advertisements do not reflect the political opinions of the program or its associates. Any political campaign or candidate who wishes to purchase advertising can do so. Advertising is open to all on behalf of Gloves Off. 